Good morning. Slightly belatedly, I gave a bit of a shock to some of my atheist friends there, but um, by starting the service on my own page. Um, but welcome to this service at Christchurch, Darley's Facebook page, hopefully. Um, and the page indeed for the whole parish of Dacre, Hart with Darley and Thorthwaite on this the third Sunday of Easter, a service of Holy Communion. Having done all right with the technology up to now, um, I thought I'd try something a little bit different, but now I'm starting to wonder. Um, <laughs> um, we're going to attempt um, to do our sort of discussion group um, sometime soon on Zoom, if you've heard of this app, um, which I've successfully had a number of meetings with other people on. Um, but if you're interested in joining in with that, um, do let us know and I can try and send you the link. Though we have to limit it a bit, the, the more people you get, the more unwieldy it can get. But we can certainly have more than one meeting and maybe spend some time chatting and discussing. Um, but for now, in just a moment, we're going to begin our service of Holy Communion. Shall we, as we are gathered remotely, Keep a moment of quiet prayer and ask God to be with us wherever we are. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. We're going to begin by singing a song. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In baptism we died with Christ, so that, as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. Let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins in penitence and faith and come to him as we are. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open the, our eyes to the truth of the resurrection, and give us the joy of his everlasting victory, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. A special prayer for this week, the third after Easter. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, gladden us, gladden us with Jesus' presence. The Gospel reading for today is taken from Luke chapter 24, um, sometimes called the road to Emmaus, because that is where the story is set. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, said, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us that they would indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but, it, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them, the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, staying, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. 
so he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I wonder if you've ever heard of an Emmaus walk. Um, I experienced it once on Iona um, after staying there over Easter, experiencing Holy Week at Easter. And at the end of the week, they encouraged us to take a walk with somebody who we'd been spending the week with um, preparing the worship, as which we did together, and worshipping together, and just walk and talk about how you'd experienced Easter, whether you'd find it difficult or dull or brilliant or what had inspired you and what hadn't. And the idea being that as you walked and talked, you opened up a space for Jesus to walk with you, for your hearts to burn within you as you walk together. But it can be hard to really open up and talk to somebody that you don't know all that well. In fact, I'd say that we've rather lost the ability in our culture to really talk with one another at a deep level. I go so far as to say we've been losing something quite important in our culture, and that's friendship. Now, I don't mean that we don't have any friends, um, though we certainly have fewer than earlier generations did. Um, unless you count Facebook friends, which I'm probably sure we shouldn't, but, um, but there's something about the depth of friendship that has become far rarer. I've been reading a book by the late John O'Donoghue called Anamkara. It's a uh, spiritual wisdom from the Celtic world. Um, Anamkara is Gaelic for soul friend. Um, for the Celts, an Anamkara was someone you felt able to talk to about your spiritual needs, your doubts and your struggles. Who do you feel able to talk to about your spiritual beliefs, feelings, doubts, struggles? If I asked that question, most of us would see pretty quickly what we've perhaps lost or what we haven't got. In Buddhism, there is the notion of the Kalyana Mitra, um, the noble friend, someone who won't accept pretension, but will gently and very firmly confront you with your own blindness about yourself, because no one can see everything about themselves. Just as the eye has a blind spot in the retina where the optic nerve leaves for the brain, and there's a gap in your vision that you don't know is there unless you perform some funny trick and can see your finger disappear. Um, there's a similar gap in our souls. Even the most self-aware person can't see everything about themselves. We need a friend to see for us, to complement our own vision. But that needs a strong and deep friendship, able to negotiate those difficult areas and awkward conversations. But, and here's what I think we're really lacking in our culture, we need to be able to hear what such a friend says, without getting upset, without seeing it as a personal attack on our ego. How many of us can hear criticism or the pointing out of our blindness about ourselves as something kind, creative, loving even? Pointing out our blindness about ourselves can help us. Most people today would probably take offence, take umbrage and want to lash out, put up defences, strike back, up would go the hackles. We want to break off this so-called friendship. How dare they? Jesus met two disciples as they walked and talked and he listened to them. And then rather bluntly, he pointed out their blind spot. Oh, how foolish you are and slow of heart to believe. Excuse me. 
How very dare you? Go away. Walk on your own. If they were Donald Trump, they'd have fired him and appointed a yes man so they wouldn't get criticised again. But the disciples have enough wisdom to see that Jesus is being a noble friend, a Kalyana Mitra, an Anamkara. He's helping them to see their way, to see that they've misunderstood. They had thought he was going to be Israel's Messiah, the Christ, who would sum up their whole history, widen God's promises and blessing to the whole world and be the whole world's king. And now he had died. And there were these crazy rumours he was alive, but what difference did that make? And Jesus takes them on a whistle-stop tour through the scriptures, showing them that to suffer and die was precisely the way the Messiah would sum up Israel's history. To be enthroned as a very different sort of king, rather than aping the world's ways of kingship. I can't take you on a whistle-stop tour of the scripture now, but try reading Isaiah chapter 53 and you'll see what I mean. That was almost certainly quoted by Jesus on the road. The kingdom of God was never going to be another version of our earthly ways of strength and power and wealth or violence or coercion or control. Otherwise, how would anything change? God's reign has indeed begun in Jesus' death and resurrection. A new way has been shown that trumps all our worldly ways and shows them up as pathetic. The ways of wealth and power and control aren't really in charge. COVID-19 shows us that quite clearly. But are we willing to be told how foolish we are and slow to believe? Are we willing to hear that we've been looking at it all wrong? We need to let Jesus walk alongside us in our lives, perhaps in the company of others, we need to let him be a friend to us, a noble friend, willing to show us the difficult parts of ourselves and us willing to hear about them. Perhaps he will speak to us through another friend. If anyone would like to talk about their spiritual beliefs, it is part of what I'm for, I suppose, though I have to do it remotely at the moment. But there may be others who you're close to who you can trust. We need to have our eyes opened to how wedded we are to worldly ways of looking at things because wealth and power are not really in charge. The cross shows them up for what they are, pathetic, self-obsessed bullies. Love is really in charge. God is in charge, and he has set Jesus on his throne. And we will struggle to understand that. I know I do every day as I look at the world through my worldly eyes. But if we're open to being told by our noble friend, Jesus, how foolish we are, our hearts may start to burn within us as we catch glimpses of the reality behind the illusions of our world. We will always struggle to understand in our heads, but where Jesus really became known to the disciples wasn't in their understanding. It was in the breaking of the bread. They didn't get it yet. It would take them a lifetime to do so, but they could still meet him and walk with him and receive him be nourished by what he did for them and would always be doing for them. And that is what we do as we gather for communion, to receive what we often so little understand, to have it change and nourish us in Jesus' name. Amen. So shall we offer our prayers to God? A response to the prayer, when I say we pray to the Father, you can respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father that our risen Saviour may fill us with the joy of his glorious life-giving resurrection that our hearts may burn within us as we catch glimpses of his lordship over the world and over our lives. For this we pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. 
we pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. We pray to the Father. Hear yeah. our prayer. That he may provide for those who lack food, work or shelter, particularly at this time. We pray to the Father. Hear yeah. our prayer. That by his power, war and famine may cease throughout all the world. We pray for those agencies seeking to bring relief. We pray to the Father. Hear yeah. our prayer. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak and the dying, to comfort and strengthen them. We pray especially for Joe Ray, Hilda Beecroft, Robert Hinchcliffe, Joan and Brian Dean, Alec Jackson, Marilyn McCallum, Alison Brackley, Nora Lamb, Janet Brown. And in a moment of quiet, let us offer our prayers for any we know who need them, and particularly pray for any in hospital and those caring for them. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. And that according to his promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on the last day. We pray, especially among the recently departed, for the family and friends of John Fisher, Richard McAvoy, Michael Alderson, Dane Swires and Craig Barnhart. Take them to yourself, Lord, and keep them. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. And that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. We pray to the Father. Hear yeah, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, you've delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be with you. Alleluia. Also with me. Peace be with you all. And so we gather and pray that we will meet Jesus in the breaking of the bread, as the disciples did on that road. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and open to them the gates of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise for ever. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise for ever. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. To you be glory and praise for ever. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught, so let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Amen. 
living God. Your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A hymn or song celebrating Easter. Now the green blade riseth, love is come again, like wheat that springeth green. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you, with all whom you love, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go in the peace of the risen Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Hallelujah.